Okay, so you've collected all of your supplies, you've grabbed a couple of blank journals, you're ready to go. Did you ever have that experience where you open the book, your heart starts to beat a little bit, you start to feel hesitant and maybe a little intimidated? Well, here's a trick, the best takeaway. Turn the first page, leave it alone. Don't even start there. That first page can be so intimidating, we can go back and deal with it much later or you can just leave it blank until you're finished with the whole journal and then put a title page in. In this lesson, we're gonna look at a variety of page preparation techniques to take away the fear of all the rest of the blank pages. We're gonna fill them with color and I'm gonna show you a couple of novel ways to use some everyday beverages that will be really surprising. One of the things I encourage you to do is to think about what kind of travel plans do you have? Or instead of even talking about travel, what kind of everyday experiences do you want to journal? Think about the getting ready to go. Is it usually a madhouse to get out of your house? Is it, are you, are you usually in a wind tunnel before a major trip or just to meet your girlfriends at a coffee shop? Well, that's a piece that you can actually write about. And then as you determine what's going to work best for you um, in terms of what you want to journal about, Think about ways to organize your journaling experience. Are you going to journal on a daily basis, a weekly basis, or try to meet up with some friends every month? Well, there are different ways to organize your journal. One of the things that works really well for me is to put tabs into my journal and make sections right off the start. It gets me engaged with this book right away. So let me show you some quick ways to create the tabs. First of all, there's some fabulous washi tape, which is just decorative tape out on the market today. Most of this tape has uh, the sticky that's not really terribly sticky. So I do encourage you to put a little bit of glue stick behind it as you use it. To make tabs, you're just going to rip or cut a section of tape, set it on the edge of the page, and just flip that tape back over on itself so it sticks together. Now, of course, you can get a cleaner line there. If you cut it, you can do something fancy. But can you see how that now becomes a tab and it hangs off the edge of your page? If you like mixed media and textural things, you're gonna love this because right off the bat, you see things kind of falling off the page, which is super. Another way to make a tab is to take decorative paper, just a scrap of something. I suggest folding it first and then adding some glue stick onto that paper on the other side, the inside. And that too can be attached where you put part on the page behind, flip that over and simply press it down so that that's glued. Here are the tabs I already have on the journal I'm ready to start. These are from the washi tape. Here's a little decorative paper tab. Tabs can be made out of really pretty much anything. It's nice to think about ways to organize your book because this gives you permission to find your own way, the way that's going to invite you in. Think again, do you want to use seasons? Do you want to use uh, things that you're doing with different people or even base it on your family experiences? Anytime you put time and energy into your book, it's going to engage you even more. I keep a number of active journals at any one time. I don't work on just one book. That kind of takes the pressure off as well. I've organized it so that I have books for individual experiences. I started meeting with a group of girlfriends going to coffee shops and we found that there was not much room in a coffee shop these days, especially in the middle of the day on a Tuesday. So we switched over to going to dive bars because there's pretty much always room at one o'clock and it's really easy to draw the people there. So this is my dive bar journal that I have for this season. And this is dedicated just to that experience with those particular girlfriends. Here's a journal I keep that's more a daily book where if I find myself just needing a few minutes of creative time, I might fill up a couple of pages and I also might take it with me on an adventure. So keeping a few books will also take the pressure off of that one pristine book with pure white pages. Another thing that will really help you engage with the page without any fear or trepidation is to get some color on there right away. 
This technique of applying chalks is a little bit unusual. Normally, if you used pastel chalk on a page and closed the book, first of all, the pastel is going to get all over your hands. Secondly, the chalk is going to transfer to the page that's touching, and it's a big mess. It bleeds and smudges all over everything. So normally, you would stay clear of using pastels in a journal or in a book that's going to actually close. But this application helps you actually get the color on the page and give some beautiful results. First thing I'm going to do is take a cotton square. They come in round. You can also use a soft paper towel or something. And I'm going to swipe it across the end of the pastel. Now you're noticing I'm not picking that pastel up and I'm not getting all of that pigment on my fingers. This also keeps your hand clean, which is a good thing. So I'm swiping the chalk with the cotton to pick up the pigment on my cotton. Now I'm going to rub it right onto the page. I can go, it doesn't matter, you can swirl it, you can go back and forth, whatever. When the pigment starts to lighten, you can get more. But the point is I'm pressing down pretty hard because I want to scrub that pigment into the fiber of the paper. Let me add just a little bit more. And of course, I can blend as much as I want and play with all kinds of color. Now, here's a few magical things. First of all, my hands are clean. If I go like this, it's not transferring to my hand. So you see that it's scrubbing the pigment right into the fiber of the paper. And the second thing that's really cool is, this is just a regular pencil with a regular pencil eraser, nothing fancy. I can erase that chalk and create all kinds of patterns and designs into the chalk application. So I could create a really beautiful border going around this with nothing more than a cotton, a single piece of pastel chalk, and an eraser, and do as much of this decorating as I'd like. Another way to use the chalk is to take just a piece of copy paper. I ripped this. Now, we live here in Colorado, so I ripped it in sort of mountain shapes just to give a hint so I could show you. I'm going to set that down on my page. I'm going to swipe across some earthy colors, and I've got the pigment on my cotton. And then I'm going to use this ripped paper as a mask, protecting certain areas and allowing the chalk to go into other areas. When I lift it up, I get that beautiful mountain silhouette showing. Now I'm going to flip this over just so I can get a different color on here and show you that. I have to press down pretty hard so that that pigment scrubs into the fiber. And when I lift it, isn't that pretty? When I lift it, I might get a little bit of excess pigment here. Please don't blow on it. We don't want to be breathing any of this stuff. So that little extra pigment there, I'm just going to press it away. And remember, if I've gotten somewhere I don't want it, all I have to do is take my pencil and erase it. That's a great way to start a page, especially if you know you're going up to the mountains and you might want to do some journaling. This is already done. Now I could really have fun writing along these edges. I have one here I'll show you that I did in a journal where I've used the three different colors and I've used those edges to give my text some direction. This page really invites me to come in and do more writing, or I could also leave it alone. But my white page now has some color and some energy where it didn't before. Now I'd like to show you how to create a simple border with watercolors. The reason I'm doing borders first is there, again, is something just inviting when you see a page that already has a border. It's got a frame. It's calling you to come in. So this is a super easy way to use watercolor, even if you've never picked it up before. I'm using a very inexpensive watercolor set. I've got my favorite watercolor water chamber brush, and I'm just using a spray bottle because it's quick. I'm creating a puddle of water in a little plate, and I'm putting my pigment into the puddle. Now I'm going to put a little water on my page, and I can do that with the spray. I could use my brush. But I'm just getting the edge of my page wet. Now I'm going to take some of that puddle of water and put it on pretty heavily. There we go. Now you can really see it. And as it's swimming around and swirling, I'm going to blow on it to create some pretty cool looking legs, if you will. 
right there I've activated the page. I'll do the same at the bottom and on the side and this page will really call my name when I'm out and about. I'm guessing that some of you have some rubber stamps at home and some rubber stamp inks. If you want to save and, and explore some new things, you don't actually have to run out and buy a whole new set of rubber stamps. I'm going to show you how to use some found objects as your rubber stamps. The only thing you really need is some good ink. I'm using this small container of Stays On stamp ink simply because the packaging is great. I'm such a sucker for packaging. It's small, it's portable, and the ink is really nice and strong. Some things that I like to do is just take the end of a pencil and use that as a stamp. And again, we're creating borders just to add interest. Changing color there a little bit. We're adding borders just to pull the viewer into the page and to get rid of that white page anxiety. So the back of a pencil works. This is a coffee sleeve. The coffee sleeve is more random, almost more distressed, as if something just kind of got into your book. But it can act as a really nice activator for that page. Here's an old eraser. The rubber is really condensed. It's really impossible to work with now. But this can work as a great stamp for a border. I could create all kinds of patterns with this. And it's really easy to control. The other part of the eraser, that really thin edge there, also can work for different designs to work around your border. And I've got bubble wrap, just regular old bubble wrap that can give different patterns, maybe a lighter touch. I love that, the wrinkly effect there. And then a favorite that I found in a cooking store, this is a silicone trivet, and that will work too pretty well. Giving some interesting shapes. You can see the different found objects I used here and experimented with the ink just to see what kind of uh, results I would get. You can see the erasers. There's that wine cork. Just the end of the wine cork gives a beautiful, almost distressed circle. That's the side of the wine cork, the eraser edge, coffee sleeve, etc. So have fun. Look for things in your house in that junk drawer and see what happens when you stamp them and go ahead and use those to create some borders. So I'm going to show you how to create a vignette on your page. A vignette is a smaller space. This is particularly helpful if you have a large journal, journal and you're feeling just a little intimidated by the size. It's good to create some smaller spaces. The other reason I love to work with vignettes is it helps me get into that travel mindset. It helps me focus and look for small things that are easily drawn, sketched, or recorded. So it also helps take the pressure away from the feeling of, oh my gosh, I've got this blank page in front of me and I have to draw something that fills the whole page and worry about composition and design. No, you don't. Watch this. I can just create some small spaces and just for fun and to mix it up, I'm going to put in some circles along with the squares. And of course you can hand draw these. I'm just trying to be a little bit neater. This is just a shipping tag that I am using from the previous lesson. I have folded it over to give myself a square. So I'm going to just trace around and create some small framed areas that will be the vignettes so that as I'm out and about, I'm just looking for things to put in these spaces. This background is wonderful for text later on, or for chalk, or watercolor, but this, that's all things that you can do as you're out and about or when you come back. Setting up your vignette is just going to give your eye a space to focus as you're going about your day, every day. I'm just going to hand draw this rectangle. And these two pages now are ready to go with me to the coffee shop or the dive bar or the park. I set this up before I went to Sejus in Spain. I drew my vignettes freehand and then I did my little watercolors inside. I was much less intimidated by just working in these small spaces. And then there was room on my page to 
put the text, put the name of the town, and do a little quick sketch here. But this really helped me focus, especially with a complicated scene like this alleyway looking out onto the ocean. It was so beautiful, but very complicated, so I could simplify it and put it in that small space. Here's a vignette that I set up to go to the coffee shop, and I broke my own rule. Oops. I created my vignettes ahead of time, I worked within them, and then I was just in the mood to do some quick sketches outside of the vignettes as well. So the other thing is, there are no rules, there's no way to fail on this. If you feel like breaking through that border, just go for it. It's a nice way to get your pages activated. Here's something else you can do with watercolor, super easy, uh, low tech, and you probably have this, these materials at home. I'm going to use an old toothbrush to spatter my watercolor onto my pages. Talk about freeing, you cannot control it, so you might as well have a good time. But before I start, I'm going to take some wax paper and place it underneath the pages I'm going to be working on to protect the pages down below, because this is messy and, like I said, impossible to control. So you do want to try to protect the pages, the rest of the pages in your journal. The basic spattering technique. I've created some watercolor puddles in a little plate with a fair amount of water and some pigment just by going back and forth, adding some pigment to this little puddle of water. And I'm going to protect my finger with some plastic wrap. You could also stick your finger into a little baggie. Um, I'm all about safe art practices and it's really important to try to keep the pigment off your skin regardless of whether that pigment is in watercolor or acrylic or oil paints. So I'm going to protect my finger with just a little bit of plastic wrap. It's still really easy to do. I dip the brush into the wet watercolor and off I go. I'm simply pulling the bristles towards me and having such a good time letting the color just splash onto the page. It's very quick, it's very, um, it just puts a lot of energy on the page. Now here's something else you can do with the spattering. I've taken an index card, which I've cut up, and I've put a little bit of masking tape on the back, just rolled up. Because I'm going to place this index card, just like we did with the vignettes, I'm placing the index card on the page to protect or mask off those areas. And I'm going to spatter now over those to create my vignettes behind the spattered area. That's enough spattering. Of course, I can add all kinds of different colors. And then when that's dry, I'm going to lift these up. <gasps> Look at that. I've got my vignettes ready to go. So that page is ready. Here's an example of spattering that I did over the index cards, only on this page, these two pages, I added the days of the week using a letter guide just to give a little contrast with the hard and the kind of wildness of the spattering. So have you ever had that experience where you've kind of found some magic in coffee that spilled or a little drip of wine? And you've looked at it and said, oh, I actually like the way that coffee ring looks or the wine stain looks. Well, truth be told, I'm a coffee drinker and I direct a lot of my everyday travels to where there's a good cup of coffee and I actually like the way that looks. So I came up with a kind of a crazy way to incorporate coffee into my journal pages. First I tried painting with regular coffee and it just wasn't um, strong enough or condensed enough to really leave a good mark. So I was traveling and discovered a packet of instant coffee in a hotel and I happened to have been carrying a little spray bottle and what I realized is I could mix the um, instant coffee with a little bit of water in the spray bottle to create something super concentrated. So if I just put a full packet of instant coffee into a spray bottle, again, that's probably about maybe three or four tablespoons of water. I would rather say an inch of water. I'm going to mix that up, and now I've got an incredibly concentrated liquid of coffee. Look what that'll do. I'm going to just take some plant material, set it down on my book, and maybe add this little feather. And I'm going to spray over this material. 
Here comes the coffee color. And I can lift it up. Ooh, look at that feather. And get some really interesting effects where the coffee moves around the object. It's very subtle and creates that beautiful brown on a page. Here's one that I did. We were in London. The sun had come out for the first time in days. So my sister and I ran to the park, pulled some grassy shapes. We had our trusty coffee spray with us, and we sprayed them so that we got that effect on the page. So this background is all coffee. The only exception is that on this page, I did take a brown colored pencil and I lightly filled in a little bit right around the edge of that wheat just to pump it out a little bit up and to define that edge a little bit more. Now, I like the aroma of coffee, but if you're thinking, oh my gosh, my book's just gonna smell like I spilled it on my shirt, Put this in the sun, the aroma of coffee will dissipate pretty quickly. The page will, will dry and the aroma will go away. You'll open to this page and just see the magic and people won't even know that it's coffee. Playing with coffee like that brought me to the next experiment. Yep, little red wine. I've tried to get off uh, wine stains many times and actually kind of thought they were pretty, but they don't work so well on the white tablecloth, but it works great in a book. So same thing, this I did, I used the concentration of the wine just as it is. So I didn't water it down, I didn't boil it um, to make it more concentrated. I simply poured the red wine in here. And for those who want to know the difference, this happens to be a Malbec. So I've got my plant material, the natural material on the journal. I'm going to spray my coffee, excuse me, the wine lift the plant material up. Oh, look at that. You get these beautiful, subtle areas. The details are just gorgeous. And okay, I'm getting a little bit of an aroma of the wine. One of my students called it a wine spritzer. And the cool thing is this is going to dry magically into this gray color. Isn't that wild? You can see just a little bit of the red over here, but it turns the page into this beautiful gray. And just so that I could prepare for the class, I did a little bit of research and found that the Malbec is actually going to give, to me, a little bit prettier gray. The uh, Cabernet Sauvignon is closer to the coffee. So you can choose your red wine based on the result you'd like to have on your page. And the final thing I'd like to share in terms of preparing your book is a very simple addition, and that is just to take an envelope, or consider doing this, take an envelope and attach it to the back of your book. In this case, I'm using decorative tape it's super fast. I'm just going to put the tape down on three sides, and then I have an envelope where I can put some of the ephemera I'm collecting while I'm out and about. And remember earlier I mentioned that the tape can get, can lose its sticky. So it's a good idea to add some glue stick onto the tape directly, and that will just help it stay permanently. So I hope with all these techniques, you found a way to get over that BPS, the blank page stress, and that you can find that this is wide open for you to use your own novel ways and to use everyday materials you have in your house. I'd really love to see the borders you come up with, the vignettes, and maybe some sprayed pages. Please take photos and share them. Coming up next, we'll move on to text and how to use it as a design element, as well as using it to record your everyday experience. <laughs>